In this video, we'll be learning how to generalize what we learned in the previous video. In the previous video, we looked at integrating odd and even powers of sine or cos. In this video, we're learning about integrating products of any powers of cos. So it could be cos to an odd power times sine to an odd power. It could be cos to an even power times sine to an odd power and so on. Any combination of those. So in our first example, we're looking at cos squared x times sine squared x. Now this is a case where we have both of our functions having an even power. When we deal with these types, we generally like to change one of the functions, either the cos function or the sine function, into the other one. So what do I mean by that? I'd like to change, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that we change cos squared into 1 minus sine squared here. So we'll be utilizing, again, we're utilizing the Pythagorean identity. That's something that seems to be very useful. Cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. Okay, so I want to change cos squared into 1 minus sine squared. So we have 1 minus sine squared x times sine squared x dx. And then we can expand that bracket there, and we have the integral of sine squared minus sine to the power 4. And as you can see, what's actually happened is we started off with a product and now we have a sum or a difference. Okay, doesn't really matter whether it's a plus or minus, that's not affecting anything. So we've split that product up, that's really beneficial. And now these are two things that we know how to do from the previous video. They, they are both even powers of sine. And the way that we do those, if you haven't watched the previous video, I would recommend going back and watching that first. But the way we do that is we make use of the double angle formulas. So for sine squared x, we can have a half 1 minus cos 2x. Okay, so that just comes about from rearranging the double angle formula for cos 2x. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that double angle formula there. So the first function, sine squared, is just going to be a half 1 minus cos 2x. And while I'm at it, I might just split it into two integrals. The second one is going to be a half 1 minus cos 2x, but that's all going to be squared because sine to the power 4 is sine squared squared. So we can, we can integrate the first integral now. That's going to be a half outside of x minus cos, sorry, not cos, that should be sine 2x on 2. That's the first integral. And this is something that you should be able to do from extension 1 and even from advanced. That one's not too bad. The next one we have to expand because of the squared. So when I square a, quarter, a half, I'm going to get a quarter. And then we'll get 1 minus 2 cos 2x plus cos squared of 2x dx. Okay, we might as well distribute this half through now. So we get a half x minus sine 2x on 4. Let's break this second integral up into two separate integrals. So we can take the quarter out. 1 minus 2 cos 2x dx minus a quarter of the integral of cos squared 2x. Okay. x on 2, we still have that. We still have the sine 2x on 4. Now this next integral, we can actually compute that. So that will be minus a quarter. Integral of 1 is x. The integral of 2 cos 2x, that's going to be 2 sine 2x divided by 2. And you'll see that these 2s are going to cancel. And now we need to integrate cos squared of 2x. But we know how to deal with cos squareds. In a very similar way to the sine squared, cos squared uses the double angle formula, except instead of minus, it's a plus. 
So it's plus cos 2x. Okay, <clears throat> now, when we're looking at this formula, let's use this blue here. When we're looking at this formula, whether this is an x or a theta, it doesn't really matter. The idea is that this angle has to be half of that angle. Or in other words, this angle here is twice that angle there. So, this is a quarter, the integral of a half, 1 plus cos of twice 2x. And twice 2x is going to be 4x. This exact integral was done in the previous video, by the way. So if you're not 100% about this, you can go back and watch it there. So we have x on 2 minus sine 2x on 4 minus a quarter x. Then we have minus a quarter times minus sine. So that's going to be plus sine 2x on 4. A quarter times a half is 1 eighth. And then we can integrate this which will give us x plus sine 4x on 4 plus c. And all that's left to do is to tidy it up a little bit. So what do we have? Well, we have minus sine 2x and sine 2x. Both of them are over 4, so they'll cancel each other out. We have a half x minus a quarter x, which will give us 1 quarter x. And then we're going to take away an eighth x. So that's going to give us an eighth x. And then we have minus an eighth times a quarter, which will be minus 1 on 32, sine of 4x plus c. And that is our final answer. The second example is the integral of cos cubed x times sine squared x. So here we have cos to an odd power and sine to an even power. And the way that we deal with this is that we look at the function with the odd power and we factor out one of those powers. So we factor out cos x. So that's going to give us the integral of cos x times, oh, let's get rid of that, times cos squared x times sine squared x. Now the reason that we do that is because we want to make both of these have an even power. And we love even powers because of this really beautiful Pythagorean identity that keeps popping up. It's so crucial. Cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. So now we can rewrite cos squared as 1 minus sine squared. So we have the integral of cos x. 1 minus sine squared times sine squared. And what we're going to do is we're going to expand this entire bracket. So we're going to have two terms. The first term is going to be cos x times 1 times sine squared minus cos x times sine squared times sine squared. So that'll be cos x times sine to the power 4x dx. And here, we're going to make a substitution. We would make the substitution u equals sine x. Okay, and then that would be du on dx equals cos x. And so du is equal to cos x dx. So before we actually go ahead and substitute this in, let's split this integral up into two. So we have cos x sine squared x dx minus the integral of cos x sine to the power 4 dx. And if you're thinking, can I just make a mental substitution? Absolutely, I would be totally fine if one of my students made a mental substitution here. But if you're not comfortable with that, I'm just doing the actual substitution to show you what it is. So in the first integral, we can see there's a cos x and a dx here, and that's going to be substituted for du. So we have the integral of sine squared, well sine is u, so u squared du, minus the integral of, once again, we have 
cos x dx here, so that's our du. Sine to the power 4 is going to be u to the power 4. And then there's the du. Now integrating u squared becomes u cubed on 3. u to the 4 becomes u to the 5 over 5 plus a constant. And now we substitute back so that we're dealing with functions in terms of x. So this will be sine cubed x on 3 minus sine to the power 5x on 5 plus c. And that is the final answer. So if we want to summarize what we've just done, there's two cases to consider. The first is if both m and n are even. So that means cos to an even power and sine to an even power. If they're both even, then we use the Pythagorean identity to change either one of them. But generally, it's probably best to change the one with the lower power. So they're both even, but the one with the lower power, you want to change that into the other function by using the Pythagorean identity, and then you want to make use of double angle formulae. The other case is if at least one of m and n are odd. In that case, you want to look at the one that's odd and factor out one power or one degree of that. That would leave you with now an even power, and that even power you want to change using the Pythagorean identity into the other function. And from there, you can just make a substitution.